We're alive. Okay. Hi, everybody. Why don't you face me this, for this part of the class, and then when we start the actual auditions, we'll just turn and we'll audition in that corner. So this is the audition edition of Ask the Diva. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Jennifer Rowley, and I have an online social media series called Ask the Diva, where people write me and ask me questions about the business and things like that. And so you guys are part of a live Ask the Diva with 360 of Opera, who's on the iPad right there. Please say hi, 360 of Opera! Hi, 360. So 360 of Opera, we are live at Baldwin Wallace University Conservatory of Music, and we are doing an audition class today. <laughs> hi, Juliana! <laughs> and we're going to start with a little talk, and then unfortunately I have to turn off the computer while the students sing for me, but... Basically what we're going to do is go through the various types of auditions in the world of opera and prepare you so that when you leave here, your graduate, when you go off to graduate school, you have the repertoire, you have the tools necessary to do an audition when you leave this school, okay? So, Ask the Diva, the audition edition. My name, oh sorry, types of auditions that we're going to talk about are graduate school auditions, young artist program auditions, Main stage auditions, which have two parts, the general main stage audition and the specific role main stage audition. The competition audition, which is a whole animal in itself. We're going to also talk about audition repertoire goals for when you leave school. And we're going to talk about audition etiquette, the do's and don'ts of auditioning, when your audition starts, how to talk to the pianist, things like that, okay? If you don't know me, I am Jennifer Rowley. JenniferRowley.com, Jennifer Rowley's friend on Facebook, Bob Rowley went on Twitter, Bob Rowley went on Instagram, and thank you 360 of Opera for joining us today. All of this stuff now belongs at the top of your resumes. So if you don't have it there yet, it's got to go. Because all of the opera houses are now checking to see what your social media presence looks like. And your social media presence is very important, even as a young artist. So when you get into grad school and you start auditioning for young artist programs, these things have to come up and you have to start updating them and you have to keep them professional, okay? So all those things have to start going at the top of the resume. Now, oops, sorry, I have to go back. How do I go back one? Click the back button. Click the what button? <laughs> yes. Oh, I love you. Okay, so the first type of audition we have that Ethan is going to demonstrate is the graduate school audition, okay? This is an actual graduate school listing for a master's of music and a performer diploma program. There will always be an online application for your graduate school studies. There are going to be a repertoire list included with your audition materials. So when you send your materials to audition, you are going to send a repertoire list with that. Quite often, you can't change that repertoire list once you send it. Sometimes you can, but there are definitely schools who say you cannot change once you've sent it. So make sure in November and December when you're sending these applications, you know the repertoire that's going to those auditions in January and February, okay? Then, your resume and headshot are always gonna go with the application. Even if they don't ask for them, send it, because it's always good to put a face with a name. I think they all ask for them, but if they don't, send them anyways. One second. Repertoire requirements are gonna vary by school. But what I'm noticing is the general repertoire goal for the master's audition is two arias, usually one has to be in Italian and one in another language. I'm seeing some that are asking for one aria in English and one in another language. Then they're asking for song repertoire, three to four songs about. There are some schools that are asking for an oratorio aria, so you may want to make sure you have one of those as well. All right, so this is the graduate school audition. Do you have, and do you need any clarification on this type of audition? Yes, honey. Um, I just have a question about the repertoire list. Yes. If the audition requirements are different for every school, should we be like adjusting it for school or should we just put everything that we will have prepared, prepared in our So system? audition, the audition, so Juliana is asking if the audition requirements are different by school, how should you be doing your repertoire list? Basically what you wanna do is put and this is my geeky way of doing everything. I put everything into an Excel spreadsheet. And I look and see who's requiring what. And I put the schools across the top, and I put the repertoire across the bottom, and I X who is requiring what. 
And if four schools are requiring an English aria, then you know you need an English aria. If another school is just requiring two arias, they're not giving specifically what kind of arias those have to be. You've already got four schools who need an English aria, so you might as well take that English aria. So you want to try to kill as many birds with one stone as you can. Does that make sense? So if you've got, let's say you need, tell me, tell me. Um, no, I've, I've done that. I'm just saying, um, let's say one school needs like four arias, mm -hmm. and the other one only wants like two. Should we include all four arias we have prepared? Only what they're asking for. Okay. So okay. if that they're only good. asking for two, then you only put two. Okay. But if you have a school, let's say you have requirements for a different school that are like, one aria has to be in English, one aria has to be in Italian, then you might as well just use those two arias for your two yeah, arias at the okay. other school. Because you want to cross up as many boxes as you possibly can with your repertoire. You don't want a list of 10 things. You want a list of five that you have to worry about for like five months of a year. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. All right, so this is the first kind of audition. Second kind of audition is the Young Artist Program Audition. Now, Young Artist Program Audition almost always is gonna have an online application as well. They're gonna have a pre-screening round through video. Most of them are gonna have the pre-screening round. So you're gonna have to make videos, and this is gonna be senior year here. I would start auditioning for some of them. First year of graduate school, second year of graduate school, third year of graduate school, whatever. That's when young artist programs are coming into effect. You are going to have to have pre-screening auditions, okay? So the best thing to do is get an aria recorded, make sure it's a very professional recording, you are dressed appropriately for an audition, and have written on the video your name, soprano, your name as the aria by so-and-so. Any video, any videographer can put that on the file for you. Then that file is gonna get uploaded to YouTube in a private link, so it's not out for the world to see, but make it unlisted or private. And that's the link you're gonna use to send your video files for these Yap Tracker auditions, for these Young Artist Program auditions. Gone are the days of sending an audio file, an MP3. They want a video, almost always. So you wanna make sure that the video is really well framed, it shows your whole body, you act like you're doing a performance, you dress like you're doing an audition, etc. okay? Repertoire requirements for young artist programs. Normally, five contrasting arias. This particular listing that we have, this is a real listing that's out right now, this only has three contrasting arias, three arias of contrasting styles. There are no language requirements on here. However, they are doing, in the 2018-2019 season, Le Notte di Figaro, Giulio Cesare, La Rondine, and Le Contouri. So, the two options for language you have are Italian and French. So, in your aria package, you need to show that you can do Italian and French because that's what they're asking for. Doesn't, ne doesn't necessarily need to be from one of these operas, but it needs to be in Italian and French because they've got them. Then the rest of the arias can be whatever you want them to be. Five contrasting arias, though, is pretty normal for a YAP audition, for a Young Artist Program audition. In those five contrasting arias, you need an English aria, 100%. Every young artist program is doing an American opera or an English opera or a musical or something every season. Some of them are doing two. Fort Worth is doing two this year, two English pieces. So you must have an American or English aria in your aria package, okay? The other four need to be geared to what you can specifically do. So if you are young and you don't want to choose a fach yet, that's totally fine, but you need to make sure that the repertoire is appropriate for the stage that, we, that you are at, okay? So obviously, if you're 23, you're not putting Don Carlo on this aria list, okay? When you're 28, you can put Don Carlo, but not at 23, okay? <laughs> so five contrasting arias we're talking about here. What is contrasting in this case Five contrasting pieces, one in English, various styles, various languages. If you have two in Italian, but one is Verdi and one is Bellini, that's contrasting. So you don't have to worry that it's five different languages. It doesn't have to be that, okay? What do young artists do? They cover main stage roles, they sing Confer Mario roles, they sing the chorus in all of the shows, and they do concerts and scenes programs. So you will be responsible for a lot of this repertoire. 
So if you audition for this Young Artist Program, you are going to be in the chorus of all of those operas. You are going to be either covering a main role in those operas or singing a compromario role in those operas, okay? If your voice type is not good for any of those operas, you don't audition for this listing. Don't spend your money on this program this year because next year they'll have different repertoire. Does that make sense? Okay, anybody have a question about the Young Artist Program? Dan, did you want to ask a question? You answered my I question. Answered. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. We move on to the main stage general audition. Main stage auditions are usually submitted by your management agency or by a manager who's helping you or by a Young Artist Program. Young Artist Programs submit for main stage auditions all the time. Quite often you will have a manager day where you'll sing for managers at a Young Artist Program. They will also have a house audition day where houses will come and you will sing for like 15 houses all at one time. So it's really great to do those auditions if you're ready. In a main stage general audition, you're gonna bring the bio and the headshot to the audition. Now notice I say bio. It's not a resume anymore when you are auditioning for main stage. It becomes a big bio with houses and roles and everything italicized, bold, etc. It is a bio of your career where what you did last, what you're doing this season, what you did last season, and what you've done in the past. We, I can give you an example of this at another time, but it's very different from the resume. But it's basically a resume that tells your story. Okay, so when you get to the main stage, bio it is. Then you should know 10 minutes usually per singer is all you get. There's usually no going over that. It's 10 minutes. You show what you can show in 10 minutes and they go on to the next singer because time is limited. They're renting rooms in New York City. Time is very limited. Three to five contrasting arias. <laughs> now again, we have the word contrasting. Contrasting arias when you get to the main stage level become very different because I don't sing Baroque music, so I don't need to include that style in my repertoire list. I sing Verdi and Puccini and Bel Canto. Maybe I want it English, maybe I want a German. But the main things I sing are Verdi, Puccini, Bel Canto. So if my list is two Verdi's, two Puccini's, and two Bel Cantos, I've created a contrasting list that fits for me what I would do for a main stage audition. Okay, so it's different from the young artist realm, but it's still fine contrasting arias. This is the audition list we're going to use today. Delaine, are you doing this one? Yeah. Delaine's doing this one. So basically, what Delaine has to look at is that they have specific roles listed, but they also have general casting. So while they are looking for those roles for 2020, 2021, and 2022, they're also looking for general casting. So it maybe means they need Compromarios. Maybe they need, uh, in Aida, maybe they need the, the high priestess offstage voice. Maybe they need in Rosalka some of the smaller roles. Maybe they need in Tosca, maybe they need an Angelotti, or they need a Sacristan, or they need a Spoletta, or you know what I'm saying? So general casting means they're listening to you, but they're still keeping in mind the repertoire that they have. But they're also listening and going, oh, you know, in 2023, we're considering doing this, so we could use her for that. Does that make sense? Then when we get into the main stage specific, it's the same type of thing, but then it is, this is what I'm casting for. The managers will then submit you for these, this audition. And the manager will say, I have so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. This one sings Carmen, this one sings the medium, this one sings Fidelio. And then the main stage, the, the house will come back and say, we'd like to hear this person, this person, this person. And those people will get auditions for that listing. Does that make sense? So main stage specific is usually from a management agency almost always, okay? Again, bio and headshot are given, either they're sent by your manager or you bring them with you. Again, five contrasting arias. Now, when you're singing for a specific role, and this goes for YAP auditions as well, you need to have the aria from that role. So if you're auditioning for Opera Theater of St. Louis, and St. Louis needs a Violetta cover, and you sing Violetta, you better start with Violetta at that audition, because they're not gonna guess. They're gonna, they're gonna say, oh, okay, 
this girl sings the Electa. I can use her for the Electa cover, right? If they've already given that cover away, then they can move you into something else. But if, they, if there's three things in this season that you know you can sing, you sing the whole role, you take those three arias with you. And you build your repertoire list based upon what the specific announcement says. Does that make sense? Anybody have a question about main stage? Okay, we're going on to competition. Competition's a whole other animal because competition is five to six contrasting arias dependent upon the competition. Sometimes you've got an art oratorio aria in there. Sometimes it's an art song competition. You just have to look at the repertoire requirements and see. In this particular competition, which is happening right now, they are asking for a list of five opera arias, including one each in English and Italian. Out of the remaining three arias, one additional language other than Italian and English must be represented. So they're asking for something very specific. So three things on that five aria list have to be very specific, and then you can pick the other two. Now, some of these are gonna require a video, some of them aren't. You just, again, have to read the listing. Five to six contrasting arias. Now, I always include with a, con with a competition what I call a reacher aria. The reason I do that is a competition is giving you money for you to continue and advance your career. So they're considering that you're taking that money and you're spending it on lessons. You're spending it on coaching. You're buying scores. You're buying a computer. You're traveling to auditions. You're doing this. You're doing that. What I want to show that competition is I'm going to use your money for the next several years to get to this point because I see myself going in this direction. So anytime I did an audition, I always had the one reacher and I always started with the reacher. And every single time it was very successful and I was given money to advance my career to get to the reacher. And I did. And it's really important that you show them and that you thank them for taking you from here to here because that money does go a long, long way. Now that doesn't mean taking Zieglinda. That's not what that means. That means if you're a coloratura, and you're not quite up to, I don't know, Lucia, right? Maybe you're a little too young to sing all of Lucia. Maybe you include Lucia because in three to five years, you're gonna sing Lucia. Does that make sense? So the competition is a little bit more strategic and it really, you really wanna show that panel, I'm going here, please help me to get there. Does that make sense? All right, so the actual audition for the actual auditions, you are going to need these things when you leave Bob and Wallace, okay? Or where you, when you leave anywhere, when you leave your school, these are the things you need. Five contrasting arias. One starter aria, one aria in English, and a clear direction of your fox. So the clear direction of where your voice is going to, all right? So if you're a senior and you don't have that, you better get working. Because to audition for your school's operas, you're going to at least need three to four. And that will be in your very first semester at graduate school. You will do an audition for the operas coming up that year and you will need three to four. They will make you do a regular audition, just like a YAP audition, okay? Three to four art songs. One song usually has to be in English. Repertoire from cycles, which you could perform in the future. It's always great to pick a song from a cycle. Because then if there's a competition that you win, or something where you need to sing on a bigger program with orchestra, without orchestra, whatever. You can pick one of these songs that you know and do the cycle that surrounds it. So you can kill a couple of birds with one stone repertoire wise, especially if the song cycle is done with orchestra. Then when you've won something and you need to sing on a concert, you've got a piece with orchestra that you've already worked one of the songs, you just need to work one of the other ones. Does that make sense? One oratorio aria. Again, an aria or a movement from an oratorio that you could sing the whole thing. Because there's no point in learning something that you couldn't sing the whole thing. So if you're gonna compete with something from Handel's Messiah, you could sing Handel's Messiah. And so if you get a job from said competition to sing Handel's Messiah, you already know one of the pieces. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Then you need your resume, your bio, professional photos, YouTube links, video and audio files. You should leave here 
all that stuff. So that when you start your graduate school, that's ready. And you are the most prepared of every single person that you will encounter who goes to your graduate school, all right? So specifically for auditions, your audition begins in the hallway when you check in. And I'm gonna tell you, I've been a monitor. People who treat the monitor badly never get hired because you tell the company so-and-so was a jerk <laughs> when they checked in and they treated me badly and they don't get hired. So your audition begins when you walk up to the table and say, hi, my name is so-and-so, I'm here for an audition at four o'clock, right? That person is keeping in their mind who was nice to them and who wasn't and they're going to tell everyone at the end of the day who wasn't nice, I promise, all right? <clears throat> Walk in the room and introduce yourself with confidence. So quite often, and what we're going to see today, is the walk to the piano is quite long. And if you walk in like this, your audition's not going to go very well, all right? You have to walk in, I'm ready to be here, this is who I am, and present yourself with confidence and positivity, and I am here to show you what I can do, okay? Positive, positivity and confidence go a long way when you're presenting yourself for an audition, all right? Next, how you introduce yourself. It can say a lot about you. It can say a lot about if people wanna work with you. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. My name is Jennifer Rowley. I'd like to start with Miss Darte from Cucini Sosca. Very professional, very concise, to the point. My name is Jennifer Rowley and I'd like to start with Miss Darte from Cucini Sosca. Do you wanna hear me sing? I don't wanna hear me sing. <laughs> okay, so the way you present yourself in a very professional, positive way, thank you so much for having me today, it goes a long way, okay? Speak to the pianist before you begin and give a tempo by lightly singing the first line to him or her. Do not snap. <laughs> the pianist can make or break your audition. And I have seen it happen where someone was a total jerk and the pianist did not play well because I wouldn't play well either. Be, to be perfectly frank, if someone treated me badly, I'd be like, <laughs> okay? Treat your pianist with the utmost respect. They are literally there to collaborate with you. They've been playing all day. So, I mean, sometimes they're playing eight and nine hours for everyone who's coming in the door. Treat them with respect. And when you give them the tempo for your piece, you sing a little bit lightly of the first line, first two lines, so they get an idea of the tempo. None of this. Got it? Yes? Okay. At each time of audition, you will choose your first piece, and the panel will choose the second, third, etc. from your repertoire list. This is always going to happen. You will always present a starter aria, and I know this is going to blow your mind but it should be the same aria all the time. Don't change it up, and I'm gonna tell you why. Nerves will always get the best of you. And if you are singing the same aria at every single audition, you will have practice in that audition. And the nerves will get less and less and less and less. Every season, change it up. You don't have to sing the same thing you sang every year in a row. But if you're going for, let's say you're going to New York and you have five auditions, same aria, five times. Because when you start playing with it, the nerves can come up, you forget words, you don't know what's going on, you start shaking. It's really hard to do this. Auditions are really hard. So make it easier for yourself by picking one really good really solid, this shows you who I am in four minutes, five minutes, Aria. That's your starter, okay? If you're doing a main stage audition and main stage has asked for a role that you want to sing for and it's not your starter Aria, then you can change it up. If you know that role, you're confident you can start with that Aria, then you can change it up. But even then, you can still start with your starter Aria and they'll ask you for the role that they're considering you for. Okay? But that starter aria, even for competitions, really important. Like literally you should be working on it all the time. Like in workshop class every single week, that starter aria. Yes, honey? 
Uh, just a question going along with etiquette as mm -hmm. far as giving the music to the pianist. Now, is it more common to see email the PDF beforehand Never. or still paper? Never. You're going to take the book and you're going to put it in front of them and you're going to flip to the, the aria that you're going to sing. I don't think it's very safe yet to take the iPad with you to the audition. Sure. I think if you're going to New York, you're doing a bunch of YAP auditions, binder, flip, pages taped together at the mm -hmm. sides, tabs for each aria. I still think we're there because most people do not have Jason's amazing pedal <laughs> to turn the page, you know? So I think it's better stick with the paper. Perfect. Okay. Then memorize your repertoire list because they are going to ask you, even if they have the list in front of them, what else did you bring with you today? And if you go, uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do. Okay? So you can't do that. So they say, what do you what else did you bring with you today? Oh, I brought Dish Toyahala from Okay? Your friend uh, I brought Dish Toyahala from Tannhäuser. I bought what did you bring today? Kuila I brought Kuila Voce from from Puritani. I brought what did you bring today? I brought Ned Roram's Our Town Emily to buy our yeah. Very good. So you have to but you have to know all five. Digga 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 digga. If you are someone who gets nervous and you think you're going to forget, make sure your dress has pockets and get a little index card and put on your index card the composers to remind yourself what you have and put it in your pocket. Then, of your dress. If your dress doesn't have pockets, don't pull it out of your bra. <laughs> put it in your pocket. Then, if you can't remember, if you physically are like shaken and you can't remember, then you have it. I have with me today, digga 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 digga, and you put it back in, they'll not, Bill won't say a word. Boys, you have it easier, you can stick it right in your pocket, right? They won't say a word about it. If you're too nervous, it'll happen, you'll forget the repertoire. Trust me, it's happened to me many, many times. <laughs> and I'm like, um, I have this, um, um, and then when you can't remember, you start saying things that aren't prepared. And so then you're giving people things in your book that you're not actually prepared to sing, and then they pick them. Right? So then you're like, oh, now I have to sing that. Okay? <laughs> Nerves can do a lot in an audition, and you really want to make sure you're prepared. Dress appropriately and dress for success, and check that heel height. Right? We talked about this yesterday about the heels being too high. Make sure the heels are low enough that you feel secure in your body. If you need to wear a flat, wear a flat. Okay? Dressing for success just means hair and makeup done. Jewelry, simple but beautiful. Men, suit and tie. If you don't want to do a tie, that's totally cool, but like pocket square it or do a really cool like cuff link. Um, you can do like a vest. Men have a lot of options. You can, I mean, as a man, you can even do jeans and a really nice blazer with a shirt kind of a thing. It's men have it much easier than women do. <laughs> but girls, you definitely, and you definitely want to go with color. You don't want to do all black because there's a lot of girls in black and you, you know, you want to stand out. You want to wear a color that makes you look really beautiful and a cut of a dress that makes you look really beautiful. Undergarments, tuck it up, tuck it up, right? Just so you, everything is secure in there, okay? You have a question? Yeah. Um, what is your opinion on length? Because I've heard some people say, uh, like, they're really conservative and they want it all the way past the knee. I mean, you the know, knee. everybody's got an opinion, right? Everybody in this room can give you an opinion. Here's the thing. If you know you're in a room, you're fine. Whatever, above the knee, below the knee, it doesn't matter. If you know you're standing up on a stage like Merkin Hall and they're sitting below you, you probably don't want a short skirt on, <laughs> right? So think about where it is that you're actually going to. If you're in a room, you're good. If you're up on a stage and they're sitting in the audience, you want to go a little more conservative to the knee or a little bit lower. It's hard to find like a midi dress that goes down no. here. Mm -hmm. If you can, they look gorgeous. They look gorgeous on everyone. But honestly, like above the knee is totally fine. If it's too high though, all they look at is that your skirt is too short. And that's mm -hmm. all they think about the whole time. And you really, you don't want that, you know? So be, you know, if you're comfortable in it, it's probably okay. You know, if you're walking around going, oh, can you see that? It's probably too short. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That kind of a thing. And the last thing, be considerate of the other singers also waiting to sing. This is a big one. Because in these places, it's very small. And also at graduate schools where they have you sitting, it's very small. 
there's a lot of people waiting in there and everyone is nervous. Don't be the one who goes and sings in the bathroom. I'm serious. You don't want to do it. It's really bad. It's no bueno. It's bad juju. And don't also be the one that's like talking incessantly in the room because some people don't want to talk. Some people want to center and be calm. Honestly, the best advice I can give you is take your iPhone, plug some headphones in, and listen to something that makes you feel awesome. Don't listen to your repertoire. Just listen to something that you love. Listen, Britney Spears is constantly on my iPhone. <laughs> you can ask all the ladies that do my makeup at the Met. I love them so much. We dance party in my <laughs> to Kesha and Britney. <laughs> And all those, because that stuff makes me feel good. And then I want to go out and do a great job, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't listen to your repertoire. You know it already. You're not going to learn it in the 30 seconds before you walk into the room, <laughs> right? So listen to, put your earphones in and just chill, right? If you need to finish touching up makeup, it's cool. But don't be the one who goes into the bathroom and warms up. If you know it's too far from where you're staying to where they are and they don't have a warm-up room, rent a room. Rent a room for $20.00 and warm up and then walk to the audition. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so that is the end of audition edition, Ask the Diva. And we are gonna start with some mock auditions. So I'm so sorry to say that we have to say goodbye to 360 of Opera. We have to say goodbye to Atla Rowley on Instagram. And we're gonna do some singing here. And I wanted to thank you all so much. You are really attentive. Thank you everybody online. And uh, we're gonna get started with singing. Mm -hmm.